Hello and welcome back to A-Level Chemistry. My name is Sam and this is the first video from 3.1.2, Calculations and Amount of Substance. Today we're dealing with Avogadro's constant in the mole, concentrations of solution, percentage atom economy and percentage yield. Let's begin. Quickly before we move on to new content, a bit of a refresher on AR and MR, relative atomic and relative molecular masses respectively. You need to be able to define both of these and be comfortable with the notation AR representing relative atomic mass and MR representing relative molecular mass. The definition is explained in the first video in the first topic, which is linked in the top right hand corner of your screen. But quickly, here are the definitions of both AR and MR. The average mass of an atom from a sample of an element on a scale where 1 12th of carbon 12 is 1. And relative molecular mass, the average mass of a molecule from a sample of molecules on a scale where 1 12th of carbon 12 is 1. All right, now it's time to deal with the mole. You will have used the mole in calculations during your GCSE days. However, I will just start at the very start with Avogadro's number. This is a constant, which is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23, which means 6.022 times 10 times 10 times 10, 23 times. It's defined as the number of particles in a mole. But what's so special about that number of particles and therefore the mole? Well, this number links relative atomic or relative molecular mass of a given atom or molecule with a mass in a unit you are used to grams. If you have that number 6.022 times 10 to the 23 or one mole of a molecule or atom, its mass in grams is the same as its relative atomic or relative molecular mass. Oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16. If you had one mole of oxygen, which is the same as saying if you had 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of oxygen, its mass would be 16 grams. If we look at carbon, its relative atomic mass is 12. If we had 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms of carbon, the same as saying one mole of carbon, we'd have 12 grams of carbon. What if the thing in question is not just a singular atom of an element, but a molecule? As you may know, to calculate relative molecular mass, we just add up the atomic masses of the atoms that make up said molecule. For example, this benzene molecule, it's got six carbons and six hydrogens here. So if we add six times 12 and six times one, the relative atomic mass of carbon and hydrogen respectively, we arrive at 78. This is the relative molecular mass of benzene. And if we had 72 grams of benzene, we'd have one mole and we'd have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of benzene. And that is why Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 is genius. This concept of the mole allows us to arrive at arguably the most important equation in all of chemistry. Moles equals mass divided by MR. If you have one mole, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms, which remember is the exact number of atoms you need to have to have the mass in grams of your sample to be the same as its MR or AR. This equation comes up again and again and again in every calculation you're gonna do in the A level. So do not stress, it'll be burnt, burnt into your brain. Something closely linked to the idea of the mole is concentration. What is it and how do we calculate it? The idea of concentration in chemistry is the same as it is in all other aspects of your life. Let's imagine you've got a bottle of orange squash and you pour some of it into one liter, a fixed volume of water. You say it tastes awful, it needs to be more concentrated. So you add more squash to the same volume of water. If you think about that, there is more orange squash in the same amount of water. That has increased the amount of orange squash per unit volume of water. You've increased the concentration of orange squash. That explains the concept of concentration nicely. It's the measure of amount of substance per unit volume, and we calculate it as such. The amount of substance is measured in moles, believe it or not, and we divide that by the volume it's being dissolved in. The thing is, the units we use to measure volume in chemistry may not be so familiar to everyday life as the concept of concentration is. Volume is measured in decimeters cubed. This would not be a problem if everything else in the world was measured in decimeters cubed, but it's not. Even equipment we use in chemistry, everything is measured in centimeters cubed or milliliters. Centimeters cubed and milliliters are equivalent units of volume. In reality, though, this isn't too much of a problem because we can convert between decimeters cubed and centimeters cubed with no trouble. If you divide your volume in centimeters cubed or milliliters by a thousand, you convert to decimeters cubed. For example, 250 centimeters cubed becomes 0 0.250 decimeters cubed. This leaves us, if you think about it, with the units of moles per decimeter cubed. The units explain what concentration is nicely. Concentration equals moles divided by volume. The units can also be written mole 
and then decimeters to the power of minus three. And that's how it's written in exams and textbooks. So you should get used to doing it. What I have here is an exam style question, maybe one or two marks to do with what we've just learned. This is typically work you've got to do at the start of a longer response style question, five or six marks potentially. The question's telling us we have 20 grams of anhydrous sodium hydroxide. Anhydrous meaning it's not in water. It's then dissolved in 100 centimeters cubed of water and it wants us to find the concentration of the solution formed. It wants the answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. Now, as we just learned, concentration in chemistry is moles per decimeter cubed. So we need to run a few calculations. The first thing that will be sensible to do is find the moles we have. Then we can find the volume and then we have concentration equals moles divided by volume so we can find the concentration with those two pieces of information. Remember from before or your GCSE days that moles equals mass over MR. So moles in this case is 20 grams divided by the MR of sodium hydroxide, which is 40. After that, we need to convert our volume from centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed. And as you remember, you just divide by a thousand. So we have 0.1 decimeters cubed of water. We have 0.5 moles in 0.1 decimeters cubed. If we divide moles by volume, then that gives us concentration. And the concentration in this case is 5.0 moles per decimeter cubed. An appropriate number of significant figures is the same as the least accurate piece of information in the question. And in this case, that's 20 grams. There's not three significant figures, there's just two. So our answer has to be 5.0 moles per decimeter cubed. Now that we've understood what the mole is and we've dealt with concentrations, we can look at some chemical reactions and the equations that represent those chemical reactions. Because we get the mole, we can do a load of calculations and that's exactly what you're gonna be doing in your A-level. If we take any equation, for example, the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, the most common acid reacting with the most common base. This is its equation. HCl plus NaOH makes H2O and NaCl. Acid and a base makes water and salt. What this tells us though in terms of moles is that one mole of hydrochloric acid reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide to form one mole of water and one mole of sodium chloride. The number one is invisible but if there's no number, then it means one. What's useful to bear in mind though is that in most cases, one mole of a molecule is a very large amount of substance. One mole of sodium hydroxide would have the mass of 40 grams. 40 grams in chemistry terms is a lot. So would this reaction still happen if you had less than 40 grams of sodium hydroxide or 36.5 grams of hydrochloric acid? Well, yeah, of course it would. The fact that one mole of hydrochloric acid and one mole of sodium hydroxide react to form one mole of water and one mole of sodium chloride salt is just the ratio of reactants to products. If we had just 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid and 0.1 moles of sodium hydroxide, we'd get 0.1 moles of water and 0.1 moles of sodium chloride salt. A consequence of this is that if you add, say, 0.5 moles of hydrochloric acid and one mole of sodium hydroxide, you'd actually run out of hydrochloric acid before you can run out of sodium hydroxide as per the ratio in this equation. You'd only be able to make 0.5 moles of water and 0.5 moles of sodium chloride. That means the sodium hydroxide would be in excess and the hydrochloric acid would be the limiting reagent. The way I've thrown those words in was of course on purpose because they are key words and it's a key idea that comes up very frequently. The idea of ratios that I just talked about is also important. What we can look at now is how this changes if we have an equation with some different numbers in front of both the products and the reactants. In this equation for magnesium being dropped into some cold water we can see it very clearly that to form one mole of magnesium hydroxide and one mole of hydrogen gas. We actually need two moles of water for every mole of magnesium. If we had just one mole of water and one mole of magnesium, we'd only be able to make half a mole of magnesium hydroxide and half a mole of hydrogen gas. This is because you need two moles of water for every mole of magnesium. You would use up half a mole of magnesium and an entire mole of water to form half a mole of magnesium hydroxide and half a mole of hydrogen gas. You can make this even more complicated than I will in this example. We're gonna react hydrogen bromide and sulfuric acid to form water, bromine gas, and sulfur dioxide. The equation goes H2SO4 plus 2HBr makes 2H2O plus Br2 plus SO2. Let's say I had the correct amounts as per this equation of sulfuric acid and hydrogen bromide, one mole and two moles respectively. I'd make two moles of water, one mole of bromine, and one mole of sulfur dioxide. That was just to show you that if you add three moles to begin with, you can end with four as you do in this case. That might sound crazy, and at first it wasn't mind-blowing to me, but it's because of the different substances being made up of different atoms. Hopefully that made sense and showed why the numbers in front of chemical symbols in an equation are so important when we do calculations. The skills we've just learned in terms of concentration and moles equals mass over MR is going to allow us to go on to much more complicated questions worth five, maybe even six marks in the full 
A level. We're going to run through an example now, which will be a reaction between an acid and a base. These are sometimes called titration calculations because titrations are often acid based reactions. In this question, we're being told that 30 centimeters cubed of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid is reacting completely. We're going to box that word with 25.0 centimeters cubed of magnesium hydroxide solution. We're being asked to find the concentration of magnesium hydroxide solution. Now, we should know from GCSE and the acids and bases topic, if you've got there, the acids and bases react to form a salt and water. The acid in this case is the hydrochloric acid. The base is magnesium hydroxide, and that's going to form magnesium chloride and water. The place to start is with the 30 centimeters cubed of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid. We know the concentration, we know the volume, and we need to find the moles, because as per this equation, we can see two moles of hydrochloric acid will react with one mole of magnesium hydroxide. We do know the volume, but we need to convert from centimeters cubed in to decimeters cubed to convert from from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed, we divide by a thousand. So we have 30 over a thousand decimeters cubed. To find moles from concentration and volume, we rearrange the equation and multiply concentration by volume in decimeters cubed to find moles. 0.1 times 30 over a thousand to get 0.003 or three times 10 to the power of minus three moles of hydrochloric acid. As per the equation, we can see that two moles of hydrochloric acid are reacted with every one mole of magnesium hydroxide. Therefore, we need to divide this 0.03 moles by two. That is to find the moles of the magnesium hydroxide that it reacted completely with. As per the question, reacted completely. So that's 1.5 times 10 to the minus three or 0.0015 moles of magnesium hydroxide. And we were told in the question, 25 centimeters cubed. We don't divide by 25 centimeters cubed, of course. We divide by that volume in decimeters cubed. So 0.025 decimeters cubed. That gets us a final concentration of 0.06 moles per decimeter cubed of magnesium hydroxide solution. In the full A level, that could be worth five or more marks and it's relatively straightforward, especially when you break it down as we did then. All right, when I want to the final thing we're gonna look at in this video, and that is percentage atom economy and percentage yield. Percent yield is a relatively simple concept to wrap your head around. It's defined as the amount of your desired product you actually got divided by the maximum theoretical amount. See, what's important to remember is that in the vast majority of cases in real life, your reaction may stop short of completion so that some of the reactants remain unreacted. There may be competing reactions going along at the side that give other products that you didn't want, and that reduces the yield. Often an industrial process is multiple chemical reactions in a row, so we have to transfer products and filter them every time. We can also decrease the yield that way. Calculating it is simple. An example is the best way to explain it. Let's say in this reaction, the desired product is potassium chloride salt. 25 centimeters cubed of 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid reacts with an excess of potassium hydroxide. This reaction produced 0.336 grams of potassium chloride salt when all the water was evaporated off. What we're going to do first is calculate the moles of hydrochloric acid. So that is going to be 0.2 multiplied by 25 divided by 1,000. Remember, volume in decimeters cubed. That gives us five times 10 to the minus three moles of hydrochloric acid. We can see very clearly in the equation that the ratio of hydrochloric acid to potassium chloride is one to one. So the maximum amount of potassium chloride we could possibly have got was five times 10 to the minus three moles, the same as the amount of moles of hydrochloric acid we started with. So now we can do one of two things, convert the grams we were given in the question of potassium chloride into moles, or convert the maximum possible moles of potassium chloride into grams. I'm gonna do the latter of that. You can do either, they both work. So moles equals mass over MR, the MR of potassium chloride is 74.6. So therefore, 5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles multiplied by 74.6 gives 0.373 grams. That is the maximum possible yield. If we now divide 0.336 by 0.373, times that by 100 to get it into percentage form, we can see there is a yield of 90.08 or 90.1%. Now, the final aspect of this video atom economy. Atom economy is how much of the total relative mass of the reactants end up in your desired product. If your reaction has one product, your atom economy is 100%. Molecular mass divided by the sum of the reactants, and again times it by 100 to get it into percentage form. That's how you calculate the percentage atom economy. So look, that's going to do it for this video in terms of moles, concentrations. This is kind of as complicated as it gets, really. The next video is going to cover everything you need to know left in this topic. It's going to have the empirical formula, 
and the ideal gas equation. I've been Sam Ellis from the Sam Ellis Academy, and this has been the first video on the amount of substance topic. Thank you for watching. See you next video. Thank <laughs> you.